Thank you. Um, glad you guys are here this morning. It's nice and chilly outside. Winter was like a surprise, you know what I mean? Just like, it's like 80 degrees, 80 degrees, 80 degrees, 30, rain, wind, boom, you know? So that's Oklahoma for you, though. But glad you guys are here. And uh, I'm so excited this morning to get to uh, be with you and get to preach. And we're going to just continue in this series called You Ask For It. But I'm the worship pastor here, and it's always such an incredible honor um, to be here. And I was just thinking right now, this has nothing to do with the message, but he was talking about GSM. I've never realized more quickly how old I'm getting than hanging out at GSM the last couple weeks, because man, it's loud in there, but, <laughs> but it's a ton of fun, dude. It's awesome. So I would encourage you, check it out. If you want to serve there, it is awesome, but those kids are crazy. And uh, if you're not looking, you're going to get hit in the head with a basketball. You know what I mean? It gets a little wild in there, but it's fun. It's awesome. So check that out. But so excited this morning to be with you. And we are in this series right now called You Ask For It. And um, it's this great series we do every single year, and I love taking the time to do this because what it is, and we've talked about this a lot over the last, you know, uh, five weeks or so, but, you know, there's lots of questions that we all have. There's lots of things that we're curious about or things that we're struggling with or we wonder, you know, what, what does the Bible say about this topic or how does this work? And a lot of times we feel like maybe like there's not necessarily a place to ask those questions or we feel like we're not getting the answers that we were kind of looking for. And so this series, I think, helps us to dive into those questions and preach about things that we don't normally preach about and um, get into those. So I'm really excited to be a part of that today and get to do that. Today, we're talking about relationship with God and trusting God and how all of that works. And we're gonna get into some questions that people asked and try to answer those and talk about that topic this morning. But I'm gonna pray for us before we start. So would y'all pray with me uh, this morning? Jesus, we love you. God, we're just so grateful to be in this place, God, to be in your house and um, God, to to worship. God, I thank you um, for the truths, God, that we got to sing this morning. Um, God, your goodness is running after us, God. All my life, you've been faithful. Um, God, I thank you for those truths. God, I thank you for your faithfulness in our life. I thank you, God, for your love and your mercy every single day, God, brand new for us. And God, I thank you that none of us here uh, this morning, God, we're not here by accident. God, you've drawn us to this place, God. Um, We're here to meet with you. And Jesus, we just ask right now that um, through the power of your Holy Spirit that you would open our hearts, open our minds, God, open everything in us, God, to receive your word, Jesus. Um, We want to leave here, God, transformed. We want to leave here more like you as a result of meeting with you. So Holy Spirit, come do that in us this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're going to jump into these two questions that I kind of picked for this week that I thought kind of worked with each other. So we got two questions on the screen here. Number one, I know I'm saved, but how do I fully turn myself over to God? How do I give God complete control of my heart, my mind, my life without becoming or looking like I'm trying to become a nun? So I like that. Um, Nothing wrong with nuns though, you know, we love nuns. Nuns are great. Um, And then second question there, how do I build a relationship with God? How is it maintained? How do I turn myself over to God? How do I trust him? How do I build and maintain relationship with God? How does it work? How do you follow God well and trust them? These are things that are talked about all the time in church. These, we, we throw these words around, God wants relationship and God wants you to trust him and God wants your life fully devoted and all those things. But I think that there's a very common experience for a lot of us, myself included of, but like, how do you do that? Like, how do you build relationship? How do you trust God more? How do you turn more of yourself over to him? What's the process? How does it work? These, these are things we talk about all the time, but I think the common experience or question in that is how do you do it, right? Because like, I can't see God. I can't audibly hear God, you know, I, most of the time I would say. And, and so how, how do you build that? How do you do it? And I think there's even a question underneath all of that that I know I felt is, is it really possible to have that kind of relationship that people talk about on the platform or that you, know, you, you see in the Bible? Is that kind of relationship, that kind of life fully devoted to God, is that possible? Is that real? Can that be something that I can actually have? Are people just talking? But what is that relationship and is it possible to have that full trust and relationship with God? So I want to recognize here at the, at the start that this is, um, this is difficult to build relationship, to, to, to turn yourself over to God, to be close with him. It's difficult, and it's difficult because we live in a world that makes it really difficult. We live in a, in a time and in a world that, man, it's so 
hard because there are so many things happening all the time. And there's so much noise. There's so many things pulling our attention in every single direction. Everything wants us to have a relationship with all of that stuff, with your phone, with social media, with the news, with work, whatever it is. There's so many voices, so many distractions, and it's so loud. It's difficult when we're being pulled in all those directions to have this over here, this relationship with God. And the Bible talks about that God speaks in a still, small whisper. And man, is it hard to hear that? Is it hard to feel close? Is it hard to trust when there's so many things pulling us in every single direction? When we turn on the news, you know, when we turn on our phones, all these things are constantly wanting our attention. I talked about this, uh, I don't know, a while ago, but there was some streaming platform that, um, you know, so, something came out in the news that they'd had all these meetings about how do we advertise in such a way, how do we push ourselves out there in such a way that we can get people spending hours of their time every day on our thing? And so they're, 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 they're trying to get our attention. They're trying to make us focus and have relationship with whatever it is they're trying to sell. That's all day, every day in our world that we live in, pulling us in a totally different direction, trying to get our attention on everything else, but God is over here and it sometimes is difficult because of the world we live in to have that relationship. We live in a broken world, it's a broken system and it's difficult sometimes to feel close with God. But I think what's encouraging to me in some way is that this isn't necessarily a new problem, but people have always sort of struggled with this. There's always been something else that is trying to get our attention and pull us in a different direction. And we're gonna look at a verse from Matthew chapter 13 and Jesus is quoting the book of Isaiah where again, the, the Israelites were struggling to feel close. They were struggling to build relationship and to stay with God. And so Jesus quoting Isaiah says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 15, for the hearts of these people are hardened and their ears cannot hear. And they have closed their eyes so their eyes cannot see and their ears cannot hear and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. That this is sometimes what happens. We're so distracted. There's so many things going on that we find ourselves in this place where it's like, man, I feel like I just can't, can't see it. I can't hear it. I'm, I don't know. I don't feel close. And I'm struggling in that relationship because there's so many things going on. And so I think there's a real need, and this is something that we have to be very intentional with, to rewire our thoughts, how we see the world, to rewire the way we think and the way we act. Because there's so many things, again, that want our attention. And if I'm going to spend my time with God and build that relationship, I have to choose that intentionally. And there's a pastor I listen to all the time, and he talks about these two ideas that are happening. He said, one thing is over here, and it's called unintentional spiritual formation, it's a bunch of big words, okay? Unintentional spiritual formation. And all that boils down to is that all of us are being formed into something, right? And the reality is that like, I can just wake up and go about my day and not be intentional about anything, but I'm gonna be formed into something because of the family I was born into, the people that are around me, the work that I'm in, whatever news station I turn on, right? I'm gonna be formed without putting in any effort. And my worldview is gonna be formed and I'm gonna to start to look like a certain person and I've done nothing to choose it. It's just happening all the time. Every single day, we're constantly being formed into something unintentionally. We're just going about our day. And so he's saying that's happening all the time, but we need intentional spiritual formation. If we're gonna be followers of Jesus and we want relationship and closeness and we wanna trust him, we need to be intentional that we need to choose the things that we do. We need to choose the relationships we have. We need to choose the voices that come into our life that are gonna make us look more like Jesus. So it's difficult sometimes to have this relationship with God that's talked about all the time in sermons and in the Bible because man, is our world trying so hard to pull us in another direction and we need to be intentional about following Jesus and building that relationship. And so to start this morning, what I want us to do is I want to set the goal just out there. I want us to look at, okay, what is it that God wants? What is the relationship? What is the trust that he wants for us? What does God want in our life? Let's put that goal out there. I think the goal, what we want, what God wants for us is God wants every single part of our life. Amen. Every single part. 
And he wants us to be in relationship, close, and he wants us to fully trust him with everything, okay? So boom, that's the goal that's there. And I said it there, not so that we feel like, whoa, I'm not there at all, and now I'm beating myself up, but I set that goal there because I need something to shoot for. I need something that I'm aiming at. That's what I'm moving towards, and I'm not there yet. And that's okay, but I'm gonna start moving towards that. I want that goal, because if I don't have a goal, I don't have this is what I'm shooting for, then I'm just floundering. And I don't know what I'm supposed to be building. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. So the goal, I believe, is that God wants every part of our life. God wants closeness. God wants relationship every single day. In every single moment, God wants us to trust him fully. That's the goal. So how do we do it? right? That's the goal that's out there. What are the things that we can do that are going to get us to that place in our life? So what I'm going to do now is that we're going to go to the book of John for a little bit. We're going to look at some verses in John 14 and some verses in John 15. Um, these two chapters, I think, are so powerful within all the scripture, but you know, within John itself, that book, the gospel of John. These are where Jesus starts really sharing, I think, some incredible ways, some things that we can do, and his heart to be close with us, his heart to be near and to have the kind of relationship that we are gonna, are gonna talk about this morning. So I think to, to really break it down simply, I think John 14 is sort of the means by which we can have that relationship. Amen. That's the means, okay? And then John 15 is then, okay, that's, this is how you do it. These are some practical things for you. This is how it actually happens. And so we're going to start with John chapter 14. We're going to look at 15 through 21. If you love me, obey my commandments. We'll come back to that later. So keep that in your memory. Um, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. Again, so distracted by everything else, it's hard to be close. But you know him because he lives with you now and will later be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. So a lot that's in there. And like, it's funny, like you, you read that and it almost feels like Dr. Seuss wrote it, you know? It's like, you are in me and I am in you. And but like all of this sort of like, whoa, you know? There's so much kind of happening and you kind of need to like read it slowly. But the, the picture he's building there is like, that's close. He's like, you're gonna be in me and I'm gonna be in you and I am in the Father. And like, it's this picture of like, man, like that's what we want. That's what Jesus is after, closeness. And there's so many things to break down in there, but what I want us to see is that he says, I'm gonna give you the advocate. The Holy Spirit is coming. I'm not leaving you as orphans. He says, right now the Holy Spirit lives with you, but soon he'll live in you. And like, that's like, he's not like your roommate. He's like, you're the apartment and he's gonna live in you with you. Amen. You know, like it's, that's as close as it gets. And so if we're gonna talk about building relationship with God and maintaining and trusting him, we have to start with the reality that he lives inside of you. There is no closer God can get to you. And I think sometimes we have an unfortunate picture of like God is up there somewhere because like a lot of the like phrasing that we use as Christians, which has its own meaning of like, you know, raise your hands to heaven or look to the heavens. We think God's like up there, but God's here Amen. and it's close. And that's what we're supposed to see. So if we're going to build relationship, the place we have to start with is every single day, every single moment, God's with you. It's like this, the Sting song, every move you make, every breath you take, right? It's creepy, but Holy Spirit's not creepy though, but... All the time, every moment, God's with you. His presence is with you. He's made his dwelling you. That's where he is. And so if we're gonna talk about relationship, we have to start there. That's the reality. God's presence lives within us every single moment. He is close. And so Jesus builds that picture for us. And then John chapter 15, he moves on to a different idea. And this is a famous sort of um, picture that he kind of creates for us. And so we're going to look at John 15, 1 and 2. This says, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. 
He prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. So he builds this picture. He says, I'm like a grapevine and my father is this gardener and he's constantly at work, right, with this vine. And, and, I, and I'm the vine and I'm providing all of the life and nutrients and all of the good things to all of these branches and God is constantly at work with those branches. That's the picture that he paints for us. And then John 15 verse five says, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And I think that simple verse there, I think is the key. It's the secret. It's the whole thing to relationship with God that's real and close. And there's trust that is real is this right here. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branches and remain in me and I in you. And there's a lot like other translations of your Bible may say the word abide. He says, abide in me and I'll abide in you. And that word we don't use very much, but again, what Jesus is painting here, the, the picture he's trying to get us to see, like it is so close. He says, remain in me, abide in me. Other words that you could use, the, the English words to get the idea of that Greek word would be to dwell or to stay. It's this idea of man, like it's just where you are. You just be with him. You remain and you stay. Another word that I find really helpful is it, you could use the word home in that. That's the idea he's trying to build. And I don't know if you're this way, but I'm this way. Like after a long, crazy day, you're doing all sorts of stuff and you get home. It's like, oh, like I, I, can, I can relax and I can like let down a little bit and I can just be comfortable. And this is where I like to be. This is where I feel the best. That's home. And he's saying like, just stay in that place. It's relaxed. It's easy. You're remaining, you're abiding, you're staying with God. And so that's this thing he wants for us. He says, remain in me and I'll remain in you. Stay, be connected and I'm gonna provide life and all sorts of good things to you, but just remain and stay and be in that place. And I think that is such a simple idea. We trip over how simple it is. We're like, it's just, he's like, just stay here and just remain and be in this place. But I think we are, people and we like check boxes, right? Like we like, this is the process to the thing, right? That's my goal. I'm gonna get there by this, 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 and this. And so we will do check boxes often as Christians. And I think what happens unfortunately is we'll substitute this kind of relationship and we'll say what, what relationship is, is me checking all the boxes. And now that's how I have a relationship, right? I went to church. I did my life group. I read my Bible this morning. I prayed. I have relationship with God, Right? Like that's what we try to do to get close because we want it to be, we need a process oftentimes. We need something to kind of do or a checkbox to check. And I think we have substituted what God really has for us and wants for us with something that's way cheaper and way less effective. And I think there's all sorts of stuff he wants for us in relationship that we are just not entering into because we've said relationship is me just checking all the boxes and now I'm close, Right. And I think there is no amount of activity that can actually substitute having relationship with God. There's no amount of stuff we can do or boxes we can check. All those things are wonderful. And we're gonna talk about doing those things. But if the heart behind those things isn't to abide and remain and be close, it's just stuff. Yeah. We're doing stuff and we're checking boxes and we're at church. I love church, right? Here we all are, it's amazing. But if, if this is the check box, then it's not building relationship. But if you're here to remain and abide, then that's where relationship is built. But no amount of activity for God can get you there. You need to have that heart to remain and to abide. And there's a famous story in scripture where you've got these two sisters, Mary and Martha, and you've all you've probably all heard this story, but Jesus is coming over to their house. And so one of the sisters like starts working, right? She's like cleaning and, and cooking and getting ready for Jesus because he's coming over with all his disciples. And so he shows up and she's, you know, full in work mode, trying to get ready and do all the things for him. And then the other sister is just like sitting with Jesus and not, not helping, not doing anything. And so she gets frustrated. She walks in, she's like, Hey, Jesus, would you tell her to like, get up and help me? Cause I'm working over here. Like I'm doing stuff. And Jesus says, no, but she's actually done the right thing here. Like her heart is in the, in the right place. Like, this is what I want. And it's a picture for all of us to go, we, we, we love to do things and get busy and get active, but what Jesus wants is like, just be here. Just be with me. 
abide, remain, stay close, stay connected. That's what he wants. And there are all sorts of wonderful things we can do and wonderful works that we should be doing as Christians. But if the heart behind all of it isn't to remain and to abide, I think it's just stuff. We need to be with God. And so if our heart, I think, is to remain and to be close and be with him, if that's, what we're, that's our goal, that's what we're after, that's, that's, our, um, that's our heart, that's our desire, then I think, how does God want us to do that? How does God want us? And I ask that question that way super specifically. How does God want us to do that? To remain and to be and to build that relationship. How does he want us to do it? And I ask it that way because I think we live, and I'm talking about my generation, the one you know, coming up and then like the one sort of before my generation. I think we live in the most self-aware of all of my likes and wants like, I know all of the things that I like, and I, I know all the things I want you to do for me, right? Like, love languages is a super big thing in Christian culture, and it's great. It's awesome, but they, you know, came up with these five love languages. This is how people receive love. There's quality time, and there's gifts, there's words of affirmation, there's acts of service, and there's physical touch, right? All these things. This is how I receive love, and every single person has a different love language. That there's, like, that's their top. That's how they receive love, and I... I sure know what my love language is, but I know all about myself and how I want you to love me and treat me. I know my Myers-Briggs personality, right? Have you ever taken that personality test and it tells you all these things about you and it tells you how people could work with you and you know, what personalities you might work best with and how people can work with you in order to like, you know, tell, tell people that this is your personality type because it'll help them to interact with you, Right? It'll help people to know who you are. And then you take the Enneagram test, right? And you, it gives you a number at the end. You're a seven or you're a three or you're a one or you're whatever. And all of those things mean something different about who you are. And I've known people that like literally said things like, gosh, like if people just knew I was a three, they would get why I was like that and they wouldn't be frustrated with me. Like if they knew I was a nine, then that would help them with interacting with me, right? Because they would know how it is that I act and how I operate. I know my Hogwarts house, people. You know what I mean? I know everything about me. And I know exactly, like I'm a Hufflepuff, okay? Makes a lot of sense. I see you. Hufflepuffs. Any, any Hufflepuffs? No, just kidding. But I know all of this stuff about me. And it feels so good when you are loved in a way that you receive love. And I remember there was a time when Sarah, Sarah and I were dating. And we were living in Australia, humble brag. But anyway... We were in Australia and we're dating and Sarah takes me on this date sort of surprised. She like, she picks, you know, we get in her car and we drive into the city and she takes me to this place. It's like this beach, this little grassy beach area. And like the whole view is just like the, the water and then the Harbor Bridge and the Opera House, like poof, right there and it's sunset. And like she lays down on these blankets and we sit there and she opens up her laptop and it's the, she has a Star Wars movie like downloaded and ready to go. And I was just like, this is the one. Like, this is the woman of my dreams, okay? And like, she opened Star Wars and we sat there on this beach while the sun set in Sydney and we watched Star Wars on her laptop. And like, what's important about that story is this, is that does Sarah like Star Wars? Zero percent. Does Sarah know anything about Star Wars? No. Every time Sarah's watched Star Wars, she's seen it for the first time, you know? She doesn't remember. She doesn't know. When we watched, like, we're, we just started the new show. It's called Ahsoka. And she's like, what is going on? I have to pause it. Okay, so Darth Vader's already dead, right? And blah, blah, blah. And I've got to explain it. Because Sarah doesn't care about Star Wars. But I like Star Wars. That's my love language, okay? It's Star Wars. And so she knows I like that. And she did that for me because she loves me, Right? Now, what if Sarah and I hypothetically lived in this relationship world where we kept saying, but I don't like that, right? Okay, you like that thing. That's how you receive love, but I don't do that. That's not how I do it. And so I don't do that. What kind of a shallow relationship is that? What kind of a broken relationship is that? If we're constantly saying, this is how I do things and I don't do things like that, I don't like doing that, if you're a quality time person, but your partner or whoever just keeps like giving you stuff, it's like, that's nice, but that's not, I, that's not my thing. Now imagine if, if in relationships do that all the time, unfortunately, where they go, hey, that's just not my thing though, so I'm not going to do that for you. Now I think what's unfortunate is that is a lot of times us and God, all the time. 
And I think we so put God in an other category. God is obviously different from us and he is in a different category. But sometimes we push him so far that there's, he, doesn't, like, he doesn't act like us at all. He doesn't relate to us at all. He doesn't do what we would do. God absolutely has ways that he receives love and ways that relationship is built with him. And there's so many ways and so many clues and so many points in scripture where God says, this is what I want. But we are way too comfortable saying, but I don't do that. And this is a moment for me too that I've been feeling all week, a maturity moment for all of us to step into, to say, it doesn't matter necessarily if you don't like that thing or if you're not, it's just like, and I've met people that's like, I just don't sing in worship though. You know, it's not my thing, you know? It's like, but it's God's thing to sing in worship. It is, you know? It's not my thing to like do the early morning, you know, it doesn't have to be early morning. Or, you know, it's not my thing to do the quiet time thing. I just struggle it's like, yeah, but it's God's thing. It's not my thing to raise hands in worship or to, you know, but that's like, we're, we, we do that all the time. It's like, oh, that's just not how I do it. It's like, well, it better be, you know, like, and, and I wrote this down for me in my notes. It was like, if you're not good at something, get better at it. Like, we do that all the time. If I'm not good at this thing over here, like, I'm going to get better at it. You know, I want to learn. I want to get better. And I'm out there doing it all the time to get better at it. But for whatever reason, in relationship with God, I'm like, oh, but that's just not my thing. And it must just be how I'm made, you know? It's like all of us are going to have things that we're not super good at, but we need to get better at when it comes to relationship with God because he has ways he receives love. And he has ways he receives worship. And he has ways that relationship is built. And we need to know that. We need to get better and, I, and I'm not saying any of this to beat us up, right? Like baby steps are steps. And if you like, maybe you're going to be like the whisper singer in worship, you know? That's a step. Do that. God hears that. And then I met somebody last service. They were like, I was, I was singing so loud behind you. Sorry. I was like, no, like God loves when you sing, you know? So sing. If you're like, I'm not a singer though. It's like, yeah, you are. You are today, you know, like that's what God wants. And so let's take baby steps. Let's get better at this. Let's move forward. There's another um, pastor that I heard one time and he said this thing that I thought was so good. And he's traveling around to all these churches and he's kind of helping them and figuring out, okay, where are you guys, you know, where, where are you struggling? What things can you get better at? Trying to give them processes and things to do and work with congregations and all those things. And he kind of came back from this big, you know, journey of doing this and working in that way. And what he came back with, he said, what the thing that I've kind of noticed is that Christians try really hard, but they don't train really hard. And I remember being like, man, like that is me with this. You know, like, okay, like I really want to be better at a quiet time with God and I want to be better at prayer and I'm going to try so hard this week to be good at it and I'm going to do it and I'm gonna like get all of my strengths together and I'm gonna be better at this and I try. And, and if that's all I'm gonna do, it's gonna last for like four days. And then I'm gonna be like, but I'm just not good at it, you know? So then I give up and I stop. But the reality is what we need to do is not try hard, but train hard. We need to train to get better at something. I'm gonna talk about game one of the World Series, not game two, okay? <laughs> game one, game two, we'll leave it over there. Ricky's a Diamondbacks fan, so you can talk to him about that later. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, Ricky was like, everybody was talking to me after first service because you said that. Anyway, but you're a Diamondbacks fan, so. Um, but there was a moment, okay? I want us to think about this. So it's game one of the World Series. The, the Rangers have tied it up. We've gone into extra innings, okay? If you don't know baseball, just go with this, okay? You're like, innings? Anyway. Um, so anyways, we're in, we're in extra innings, right? And all the Rangers have to do is get one run and we'll win the game, right? We've got to score one more time. And this guy steps up to the plate, Garcia is his name. And he's a beast, okay? He's like, he's awesome. And he gets up to the plate. And now what I was thinking about watching that is I was thinking he's not gonna try to hit a home run. Like he can't step up there and just like try, but he's been training his whole life to hit that home run. And that's how he's gonna hit it. Not because he's gonna get up there and just hope and swing and try, but he's been training his mind and his body to know how to do that for his entire life. And that's how he's gonna get up there and hit that home run to win game one of the World Series, okay? And then we need to work on that more moving forward, Rangers. But, <laughs> and I say all that to say, because that's like, that makes a lot of sense to us. Like he's been training to do this thing, to get better at it to where he can actually do it well. And that's how we need to be as followers of Jesus, 
Like I can't just try to get better at relationship. I need to train. I need to figure out what does God want? How does God receive love? And how can I get better at those things? How can I take steps every single day to get better at what it is God wants from me? Because if, you were, if you're remembering back, so in John chapter 14, verse 15, what he says in that section, he goes, if you love me, obey my commandments. Like that's a great like sign right there. How does God receive love? He goes, if you love me, you'll do what I say. You'll do the things that I've asked you to do. That's how you love me. That's how we build relationship. That's how we feel close. And the more close that we are, the more relationship we build, the more you'll trust, the more you'll give yourself, all of those things follow. But we need to know what God wants and we need to do those things. I think all of us need to take that maturity step to go, okay, I'm gonna take a step. And there might be things that I just don't do or I don't feel like I'm good at, but I'm gonna get better at them because it's how God receives love and it's how relationship is built. So if we want to be the people that remain, that's our heart, right? That I wanna be close, I wanna stay connected, I wanna love God the way he's asked me to love him and I wanna be a person who trains and get better, to, 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 to get better and take those steps. I think there are some things that we can do that help us in that. But again, if, if these things are just check boxes, then not super helpful. But if my heart is to be with him and to remain in him, there are some things I think we can do, some practices that are helpful for us to build relationship and build trust. And these are things we see in Jesus's own life as he was walking and living here on earth. The first one is two things, but three things sounds better. So I put two things together in one so that I have three things instead of four things. Just a w window into my process. So the first one is prayer and solitude, okay? How, do, how can I build relationship? How can I get close to God, prayer and solitude? And this is one of those things, and I wrote it down here too, where, and, I, and I've been here where you're like, ah, but like, the, like, you know, like you try to get alone and try to get quiet and like put all this stuff away. And I do this where I'm like, okay, like here we go, God. And it's like early in the morning and my phone's not here. And I'm just like, I'm gonna be here with you. And I'm just gonna like, be in this moment. I'm going to rest in your presence, God. I want to think about you. I want to focus on you. And then you're like, hmm, hash browns from Taco Bell or, or, you know, from McDonald's sound pretty good right now. And, you know, you start thinking about it. You're like, but it's so bad for me, though. Like, I shouldn't want that. Like, I should want to make eggs. And then eggs are so messy, you know, and you got to clean that up. I don't have to clean up, you know, McDonald's. And like your mind's like, whew, gone, right? That happens. And I, so, and then what I do is go like, man, I tried and I'm not good at it right? And I, and I don't do it anymore. Like, no, like you can get better at that. You can take time to get alone and to pray and to be quiet and to listen. And you, you know, there's a pastor who said, you know, when I do that, he's like, my mind wanders a hundred times in that 15 minutes. But instead of me beating, me, like beating myself up for those 100 times, what I say is I've had 100 opportunities in the last 15 minutes to come back into the love of God. I've had 100 opportunities to come back and train myself. When I go here, I come back and I get better at this. And the more that I do it and the more that I keep that mindset, the better I will be. Luke chapter five, verse 15 and 16. But despite Jesus' instructions, the report of his power spread even faster and vast crowds came to hear him preach and to be healed of their diseases. Verse 16, but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. This is a pattern in Jesus' life. This is a habit, a practice that he made to be close with his father was to get alone and pray and just be still and be quiet by himself. Because there's all sorts of stuff going on, right? Like this verse says it, like people are coming, things are busy, things are crazy, and like right, all of this stuff. But if he's gonna stay close and remain, he's gotta get by himself regularly and pray, refocus. He's gotta be in the presence of God, not just doing stuff. And so Jesus takes time for prayer and for solitude. We need to get better at these things. Number two th thing I think that we can do that's gonna build relationship that God's built into our life is something we should do is Sabbath. We don't talk about Sabbath very much because like myself, like we're not good at it. And so I don't wanna talk about it, you know? Cause it's not something that I feel like I'm very good at all the time, but it's this thing God builds in from the very beginning. Life's gonna get crazy. You're gonna get busy, things are gonna happen, so you need regular, once a week, a day, to just stop all of it and be with me. 
to keep that relationship strong, to keep feeling close, to keep trusting, you need to Sabbath. Deuteronomy chapter five, verse 14. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your oxen and donkeys and other livestock and any foreigners living among you, all your male and female servants must rest as you do. Right, like this is what God has placed from the very beginning is to take rest once a week and to take it seriously. He's like, take, take time because you need it to be close. You need it to center yourself. You need it to refocus. You need it to relax. Because I'm the guy who very much is like, even on a day off, I'll find little ways to like, I'll like, I'm gonna just like respond to this email or I'm gonna build this slide over here for my message because I kind of forgot. And, like, and I start doing all those things and it's like, I'm shocked when a few weeks go by and I'm like, I'm so tired, you know? Because I haven't rested, I've not stopped. And I feel maybe distant. I feel like there's not like the, you know, like the relationship with God that week wasn't great. And it's like, I'm surprised because I didn't take time to just rest and stop for a bit and be with him and remain. But I've been working and I've been doing stuff. And again, the goal is not for all of us to be good at this by the time we leave. We have two minutes left, right? Can you get this right in two minutes? No. But can you find time this week if you can't take a whole day to take like two or three hours and like, you know, put the phone away and say, hey, I'm gonna rest for a little bit. I'm not doing anything. And I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna find what fills me up. I'm gonna spend time with God. I'm gonna just be in his presence. Can we do that? And then over the next weeks and months, can we build on to that? Can we figure out how to make that more? Can we figure out how to get better at that? I think so, absolutely. We can get better at it. So number one, prayer and solitude. Number two, we need to Sabbath. And number three is scripture. Like all of these so foundational, basic, but that's because they are the tools that we have to get close with God. Number three, scripture. So 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Like there's no getting around that relationship with God is built when we're in his word. And we're people that read and we learn and we study and we are lovers of the word of God. And we're in it. And I think here, another one, like this is a place where we need consistency and we'll get better at this because I have been the person many times where you like read like something and you're like, you know, I don't know what I just read. I don't know what I was supposed to learn. But like, again, we'll do that sometimes and we'll feel like we're not good at reading the Bible. And so we let it slip. It's like, no, it's okay. You're gonna, there's gonna be tons of times where you sat down and you read, you read your Bible and like, you're gonna feel like you're like, I don't know, I didn't really get much out of that necessarily. But the more that you do it, The more consistent you are in building that practice, the better you are, the more comfortable you get, and the more you will start to get things, and the more you will start to feel close because you're spending time with God. We need to pray. We need to be alone sometimes. We need to rest in his presence, and we need to read his word. Those are three of a hundred things that we can do to be close and to have relationship. But all of it, if we don't have the heart, like he says in John 15, to just be with me. Stay in this place. It's so simple because God wants it right there for us. How do we stay close to God? How do we build relationship? We stay and we get better and we move forward. And the more that we try this, the more, the more that we train in this and get better at this, the better we get at it and the more relationship is built. And it's the rest of our life. This isn't a thing that's gonna happen right now, but this is a thing three years from now, you're gonna look back and go, man, am I closer. Do I trust God so much more now because of three years of discipline and work and practice to be close with him? So this isn't a piece of our life. This is the goal of our life. This isn't the add-on thing over here that I get when I have time, but this is what I'm building my life around is to be close to him. And I really felt like as we're wrapping up, I wanted to share this thought too, because I think there's probably tons of us that are in this place right now and we're like, man, like, I do, I'm like, I'm very, feel like I'm far from God and the relationship is just like not there. And I don't feel close and I don't feel, and you're, you know, you're in that John 15 place and he talks about, he's like, my father cuts off the branches that are like producing fruit. And there's kind of this moment of like, gosh, like have I been cut off or something? Like, you know, like what's happening? I feel far away, I feel distant. I feel like things aren't working. And this is what I would say, two things. 
The first thing is God is also in the business of taking branches and putting them back on that vine. That's what he does. And so I want you to know that and believe that, that God is all about restoring you into relationship. And there is so much life-giving power being connected with God and he wants you in it. And the second thing I would say is just stay. Like keep doing it, keep showing up. Keep being in that place and saying, hey, even though I feel far, I feel distant, I feel whatever, I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna abide and I'm gonna remain because I wanna get better at this and I wanna grow closer to God. I wanna trust him more. So stay connected. I'm gonna read a quote for us now from this book. This book is called um, The Practice of the Presence of God by a guy named Brother Lawrence. And it's awesome. And everybody should get it. It's super small. You can read it in like one day. And what it is, is there was this um, guy named Brother Lawrence who um, lived in a monastery in Germany like 300 plus years ago. And he was like a cook and a dishwasher. But this guy figured out the secret of abiding and remaining and practicing and getting better at, at spending time with God. And so he wrote all these letters to people kind of struggling with different things. And so they found all these letters and put them in this book and it's called The Practice of the Presence of God. And I wanna read for us his fourth letter that he uh, uh, wrote. And so this is um, a letter from the book, The Practice of the Presence of God for us as we end. He says, my dear sister in the Lord, I sympathize with your difficult situation. I think that freeing yourself of your present responsibilities for a while and devoting yourself entirely to prayer would be the best thing you can do for yourself. I love that. It's just like, it's getting a little hectic right now. Like maybe like get alone and pray and like kind of just shut things down for a bit and devote yourself to prayer. It's awesome. God does not ask much of us, but remembering him, praising him, asking for his grace, offering him your troubles or thanking him for what he has given you will console you all the time. During your meals or during any daily activity, any daily duty, lift your heart up to him because even the least little remembrance will please him. You don't have to pray out loud. He's nearer than you can imagine. It isn't necessary that we stay in church in order to remain in God's presence. We can make our heart a chapel where we can go anytime to talk to God privately. These conversations can be so loving and gentle and anyone can have them. So why not begin? He may be waiting for us to take the first step. Because we have such a short time to live, we should spend our remaining time with God. Even suffering will be easier when we are with him. But without him, even the greatest pleasures will be joyless. May he be blessed in everything. Gradually train yourself to show your love for him by asking for his grace. Offer your heart to him at every moment. Don't restrict your love of him with rules or special devotions. Go out in faith with love and humility. I remain your servant in the Lord, Brother Lawrence. I think there's so much in there. He's figured this thing out. Gradually train yourself. And don't, don't go to check boxes. Don't have all the rules in the set. This is what it is. But just train yourself to be in his presence. Train yourself to stay and abide. Train yourself to praise. Train yourself to rest in him. And that builds relationship over your entire life. So can we have that kind of relationship with God, that kind of trust? Absolutely. And we can spend our entire life getting better at it and knowing him more. And that's my prayer for all of us. Can we stand this morning? and we'll pray together. Jesus, we love you, God, and um, we thank you for your closeness in our life. We thank you for the gift, God, of the Holy Spirit, God, your presence in us every single day. So first, God, help us to be people that know that and remember that and are constantly aware of your presence in our life. God, we wanna be people that can be the people you talked about in John 15, God, that remain, that abide, that stay connected. God, stay with you. And as life gets crazy and life gets hectic, God, would we be the people that, that can turn down those other voices, can turn down those distractions and just stay. We can retrain ourselves, God, rewire the way that we think, God, to be focused on you and to be with you. God, I love that line from Brother Lawrence, even the least little remembrance will please him. Every moment, God, that we take throughout our day, God, to stay and abide and to remember you're with us and that we are with you, God, that is, that's relationship and that's building closeness and trust and love. So Holy Spirit, help us to be those people. 
God, for those of us in this room, God, that we beat ourselves up and we feel like we struggle and we feel like we, we're not good at this. And so we sometimes we stop trying. God, help us to not be people that try, but people that train and get better. And God, whatever it is for, for each of us in this room, God, whatever that step is, that baby step, help us to take it today. God, help us to take it right now in this next song of worship. What is it? What, what do we need to hand over to you? What do we need to do, God, to take a step into relationship and into closeness? because you want us close and you want relationship. And so Jesus, we want it. And that's our heart is to remain and to stay and to abide with you, Jesus. And we love you and praise in Jesus' name, amen.